So I don't know about you all, but I, I felt that I was in a wonderful graduate course where I just had a minute and I had that moment where I wished that it kept going. I, I Literally at one point uh, something was said and I moved to the edge of my seat because I was so engaged in that. And I, I love the intentionality of this forum. So I really want to thank uh, Samantha and Tacey first for the work that they do in organizing it. I want to thank our standing speakers and also our facilitator and our people here at MCTV who make this happen. So I, I do want to end on a couple points if you don't mind because when they asked me can you do you want to open or close and I said well I want to close I said but I can't really write anything until I hear the speaker so I'm writing all these notes and I had to stop tweeting because I'm writing 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 and I want to start with a couple of things um, one you all know right now it's probably most parents I seem to be learning everything in life through the eyes of my child mm -hmm. right so uh, Miles is in second grade and you know that he's keeping a moon journal. This is the process, one of the major projects this year. So every day he has to look at the moon and write down three sentences about what he sees and is to draw the moon that particular day. Now this moon journal has become the bane of our existence <laughs> uh, because you know if you miss the moon that night, which we never can seem to find, he has to go online to look up the moon and he knows how to do it and, and, and now he's playing catch up because he missed three or four days so he had to go and do the moon journal. But the beautiful part about this is that I'm learning things about the moon that I clearly have forgotten or never knew. So last night, you know, we had a, a board meeting. I'm driving home, 11 o'clock, coming down Clarksburg Road, and there was this beautiful crescent moon, right? So all I could do was stop. I literally put my brakes on and I realized I need to pull over. I pulled over, and what did I want to do? I wanted to take a picture so I could show Miles, right? So I stopped and took five or six different pictures, blowing them up to so the moon, and I got home and I wanted to wake him up, <laughs> right? 11 o'clock, 11.30, wanted to wake him up so I could show him the crescent moon because it was a crescent moon last night and it was huge and I thought he loved that. And I thought, what joy I had in that because I was living in that experience with him and all this month I've been frustrated about the moon journal right but I had that moment where it was just <gasps> and I had and I wanted to set that that face one of you showed a face of a student I had that moment where I had that and then I, I recalled earlier that day I called him because I knew I wouldn't see him that night and I said how was your day he said oh mama guess what I did today and I said well, he said I'm planting a radish and he's telling me about the radish he's planting in class. And I kept thinking, how do we get these moments? And he was so excited to tell me about the soil and the seeds. And he said, but mama, do you like radishes? And I said, well, I don't really care for it. He says, well, who's going to eat this radish once I grow it, right? So there's this very, very thought about that. And I contrast that to this weekend. I was with several of our students at the Black, Brown, and College Brown Conference in Florida. And at the table, we're having this conversation. I mean, these young men were brilliant and one of them turns to me and he says why am I waiting for someone else to tell me about my life experience and he launches into a dissertation on epistemology and the meaning of life and the meaning of his experience that had me had to stop what I was doing and pay attention and then engage in an intellectual conversation that was rich for me at that moment so as I was sitting here thinking about those two moments, I was thinking about these major movements that have happened in higher education, the Morrill Act, the GI Bill, Truman Bill, uh, Truman Commission, Title IX, and then I saw that statement, change priorities ahead. Mm -hmm. Turns out that design matters. So you think about that, and you think about this joy that I think about talking about Miles earlier, this experience he'd had, and this way in which now the student who I'm having this conversation with who is growing, expanding in that moment. So I said, how do we as an organization embrace our inner troublemaker to become agents of emergent possibility? Um, as Parker Palmer would say, how do we give host to the alien other? Right? How do we give host to that alien other where we as an organization, and you know, I've been talking about this for the last two years, vulnerability, I saw you turn around and look at me, vulnerability, risk, courage, community, doing that both in the classroom and those learning moments that are occurring, but more importantly, doing them organizationally. That to me is a profound thought. How do we create organizations that are ready for the change priorities ahead, that understand not only the mission and the purpose of what we're doing, we're doing, but embrace them in a way that we are creating these safe spaces where not only we're having the conversation to have, but we're acting on them. 
That to me is the intentionality behind this whole President's Innovation Forum. It's about creating opportunities for dialogue. It's planting those seeds that we may never see come to fruition in the same space, but they start to fester and grow throughout the organization. So the, one of the big takeaways for me, this academic reorganization we've been going through, and we've had some <coughs> stress with that, stress is organization. I'd like to think we're on the other side of that. But here's a part was interesting. Disciplinary leadership. So instead of focusing on some of the things we've been focusing on, the idea of actually is a discipline talking about the big T and the little T, the noun and the verb, thinking about social justice, thinking about transformation. That to me is what this type of conversation is about. And that's the intentionality behind this. So the last thing I'll say, and I, I was very struck by this, this idea of, I, I wrote it down, risky behavior. You know, normally that has a negative connotation, right? But I started thinking, what would it be like if we created a caring organization that at the same time didn't tolerate transformation, but celebrated it? That found opportunities where we could nurture that alien other, where we could embrace risky behavior that allows at some point we may be unsuccessful, and at the same time we may have this unbelievable abundance of success, I think there's something magical in that moment. And I'd like to think that's the intentionality about these types of conversations, the deliberateness of looking at it through the lens of whether it be technology and whether it be how we learn, how we teach, how organizations are structured, how we think about change processes. That's what this is all about. And I'm so glad that you all chose to be a part of it. Those of you in the room, those of you who are in our online uh, spaces, and I look forward to continued intentionality around these types of conversations. Um, I want to invite you because as we do very well here, let's recept. Um, <laughs> we're going to have a reception that's going to take place in the Science Center in room, I believe, 152. And I will hope that you take the opportunity to leave this heat, immerse yourself in the chill for a little bit, and then come into a new space where we will be able to celebrate and have some continued dialogue. Again, thank you all so much. And please join me in thanking our uh, guests here today. Some good stuff. You know it's bad when I have